Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and today I will be covering everything we know about the timeline of the spread of the infection throughout S23 Serpients. So before I get anywhere here, a spoiler warning is required. If you have not finished the game and would like to not be spoiled, please click off now and finish the game yourself. It is an amazing story and I highly suggest experiencing it for yourself rather than being spoiled by a YouTube video. I'll give you the time now to do so. With that out of the way, it's time for us to get right into this. To start off, let's establish how we were able to make a timeline in the first place. This is possible because S23 Serpients is most likely not in a dream, and rather was an actual location that got distorted due to bioresonance. This can be supported by the location following normal geometry, having all items and situations within having logical reasoning for being the way they are, as well as the notes in this area all having connection without clear contradictions. These facts do not hold universally true for areas like the beach, rot front, and especially nowhere, which are all theorized to be within some degree part of the dream. So I think it very solidly establishes that this, if anything, is not part of the dream. With that established, let's also set up one other fact. No, the infection going through S23 is not a literal virus. While I do consider Adler to be an unreliable source for things, this is something I believe he is correct in. But I would be a bad source if I just arbitrarily decided to trust Adler when his words happen to play along with what I believe. So instead of him, let's pull up the actual proofs that actually prove this isn't a sickness, and they are the following. 1. Corrupted units when killed show off a distortion around them. This distortion implies reality itself is being distorted. And two, the primary units who seem to start this infection were bioresonant, likely suggesting that this is just bioresonance gone haywire corrupting reality. We know bioresonance can do stuff like this. Bioresonance has been talked about as doing climaforming. Bioresonance is talked about as being the reason the Empress was so powerful. To assume it can't lightly distort reality enough to make some replicas go insane, I think is just kind of closing our eyes and not accepting the fact that it could. With that established, I can now get into the timeline that this corruption occurred. Everything begins with Falk. Um, while currently we, we don't know what happened at the gate, that does need more theory. Um, but we do know, at the very least, she looked past it, she saw something, and she got corrupted. And that's when she fell ill. Both she and Adler state that this is the point where she fell ill. And Falk's falling ill is the very initial point of this corruption, and a lot of its ability to spread does originate from the fact that she is the strongest bioresident in the facility. Um, it is also believed in some theories that this is the point that Adler was initially corrupted, seeing as his leadership and motives become extremely inefficient from this point forward. But we know exactly what the next step is. By picking through notes and understanding the lore of the Calibri, we know that the next event was the island Calibri falling ill. This painting could have been a creation of Falk's distorting reality to make a version of the painting Arianne so loved, but I actually don't believe that, because I did some research and I found it's actually a fairly popular German painting, so it's more likely that they just had one on the facility, and due to its connections to Arianne, it hyper-amplified the corruption in its radius. This amplified corruption combined with the close connections the Calibris have with Falk, them even being described as her amplifiers, to corrupt the island Calibri. From here, the entire Calibri network would fall, seeing as both their leaders and their sister had already succumbed, and the network is described in lore as being one that where when one member is pulled down, they will pull the rest down. It is very clear what exactly happened here. The failure of the Calibri network would then in turn allow the corruption to now spread across the entire facility, rapidly turning the ties against any type of organized events or organized defenders. It is also important to note at this point one lucky, well, maybe unlucky, Calibri would escape her sister's fate by being in the library. We don't know how exactly long she was in the library, however the fact she escaped the call of the corruption just by being in this room does suggest that the corruption spread to the rest of the Calibri. It happened rather quickly, or at least quick enough for her to logically be in this room the whole time. Nobody spends entire days in the library. This suggestion is again supported by how exactly Calibri work in the lore, as the network being brought down would likely be fast because they're all hyper-connected to each other, so if one falls, they're all falling. 
At this point, with the corrupted bioresins being pumped out, there is units all across the facility failing to the infection. This can be seen by the patient files in medical, which suggests that the medical wing was doing its best to handle the stolts and replica infected, however, it was racking up high numbers of casualties and being overwhelmed as it not only didn't know what was causing it, didn't really have any clear solutions on how to treat it or even slow it down. It was also likely the first wing of the facility to fall and f- like fall and fail to the infection. Uh, this is likely due to the large amount of patients it would have been receiving. This fact would isolate and doom the gestalt and replicas of the re-education and factory wings, which already is showing a very quick failure of the facility. It is also at this point that Adler begins to remember memories of an Alster unit in the facility. It is highly likely that there never was any Elster unit at S23. So this is a sign that Adler may have already succumbed in at least part to the corruption by this point in the story. Now we arrive at the last glimmer of hope for the facility, with a quarantine raised in effect, or at least in an attempt, to contain the sickness. Storcher Sieben takes control of the guard and attempts to use her remaining forces to hold back the infected and maintain the quarantine as large as she can. She also notes a questioning of Adler's sanity, indicating that likely outside of ordering the quarantine, he really had not done much to help the facility while it was rapidly decaying. However, this glimmer of hope quickly fades, and with each casualty reducing Sieben's chances and the stress of the quarantine, it really would only take one event to completely destroy any chance of this facility's survival. And that event, in this case, is the rogue Storch who broke the Yule's tape player. It is established in the lore of the Yules that they required such a tape player to maintain stability, and without it, corruption would easily overwhelm them. It is also established that the Storchers were annoyed by the sound and decided to break in and destroy it because it annoyed them. So most likely, it can be believed that right after it was broken, they immediately were corrupted, and the Yules succumbing to the corruption was likely something that tipped the balance of power to make it impossible for Sieben to maintain control. It can also be believed that following the corruption, they directed their hatred towards the Storches, who had caused this pain, and together with some corrupted star units, pushed down the facility to the Storch Storm. They then pushed into the Storch Storm and proceeded to overwhelm its inhabitants, violently murdering them, and in the process, completely destroying Sieben's organization. From here, Sieben would remain in the rationing office, not wishing to go out and die a pointless death, seeing as her most organized plan had failed. Who could blame her for not thinking she could do anything alone? At this point, the facility is practically overwhelmed. However, there is one more minor story that I'd like to cover before the events of the game. Star Hunter, the top in the facility, likely was corrupted while signing posters of herself. Seeing as a star is found alone in the star dorm, and the light is still on, and there's you know posters of Star Hunter that were being signed, this is likely her. She most likely fell to the infection due to not being promoted despite her high ranking. She didn't become an officer, so that likely is what did it. Following this is the start of the events of the game. Elster arrives and the rest is history. We all know what happens during the events of Elster's adventure. However, during the events of the game, there is one more event that happens. This event happens likely within hours of us exploring the facilities, but before we arrive at this part of it, meaning it's happening alongside Elster's journey. And that is the death of the star cadre in the mines. Everyone remembers the tragic Yule morning as her star lover slowly passes away and they have a cute little dialogue. The event that caused these fatal injuries likely happened just a little bit before Elster arrived, and is theorized to be the following. Seeing as there is an entire cadre here, this cadre likely fled into the room for safety when the infection overtook the mines. However, due to the lack of lighting or flashlights, they were unable to see the wires and thus ran into them, decimating the cadre and heavily wounding the last star. After the cadre slowly died out trying to get the corner, it only left the final pair of the Yule and the star who were lovers. This likely suggests that they stayed close to each other during the frantic attempt to cross through the darkness, which likely means that the star being wounded maybe shielded the Yule from a wire because they were close together to each other, and if the star got hit, then the Yule would not get hit. And the Yule then probably dragged the star and the bodies of her cadre over to the clearing for at least one last moment, slightly before Elster arrives. And that is the entire timeline of S23 Serpiens, or at least everything that is known at the moment. The tragic story of this mining facility on the land is, much like everything in this game, the sadder the more you look at it. 
be it Sieben's valiant attempts to hold control, or this all being a sickness due to one unit, the story of Signalis never fails to provide lots of entertainment and decent amounts of sadness. If you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe or join either my main Discord link below, the unofficial Signalis Discord, or the r-Signalis Discord, all of which are linked below. All three are awesome places that you'll be able to find people to talk about Signalis to. But for today, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.